ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the return of Stardom Review. It's been a while. I am your co-host, Andre C. Right over here, it's the angry princess herself. It's Melba. How you doing, Melba? I'm not angry. I just had an angry reaction remembering a stupid memory. Oh. People are stupid. People are stupid. I'm doing great, Andre. It's been a it's been a day. I had a nice it's interesting start to my morning. I didn't make it to the gym. Nice conversation with some friends instead. So that made me happy. I hadn't heard from them from a little bit. From a little bit? For a little bit? Autocorrect in my head there for a second. How are you sure. doing, my friend? Ah, oh, good. Work today. Got to, I, I did get to the gym. Got a little bit of a workout in. And I'm feeling good. So I came home. I took a nap this afternoon. Finished a stardom show. Yeah. Gonna after they after we record this, I'm gonna go watch some Mari Golds. Yeah. Yes, yes. I got through. How much did I get through? I made it through to the Queen of Queens. Queen of Queens. Ooh, two from the end. Yeah, yeah. I made it to that one, and then I. Oh, an emotional mess. Whoa! Why are that's why when I. When I, that's why when I opened the video, I'm like, why is this in the middle of the show? And I went back to the beginning because we share the account. Oh, that was you who did that, you dick. Well, I went to start watching it and then I got distracted with something and had to do <laughs> other things. Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> well, at least that explains that technological gremlin. It was oh, you. Oh, dude, the world. The world we live in. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you share an account with somebody? I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. But we're not here to talk about Marigold. Not on this show. Maybe. No. Uh, we're here to talk some stardom. Uh, we're going to talk yes. the July 7th event from, this past, from last weekend. I know they just dropped a show yesterday on stardom world that they did live but we haven't got a chance to watch that yet we will in the next couple of days and that will come out later this week but we're talking last weekend show because i think we were both very interested in one of the matches in the early part of the card in thecla versus uh saya carrara we were both like oh she's gonna die we were both like she's gonna die we we're like she's gonna die also for catching up you finally come into july Oh yeah, welcome, I, I said July. <laughs> you did, you did. Whoa, without like catching myself, I did it on purpose. It's not back to reality. Oh, there goes Andre. Oh man, I just finished the <laughs> Eminem, the new Eminem CD. So, <laughs> oh, uh oh, uh oh, it's, it's can we expect good. to see a review on OLE with Bobby Munson? It's been if Bobby Munson listened lately, if Bobby Munson's listened to it, I'm down. <laughs> Hey, there you go. There you go. Reach out to Mr. Money Munson. Make it happen. I will. I might reach out to the Money Munson. But I'm yeah. going to reach out to you right now and say, hey, let's do this. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> Touching tips and it's not even a rad show. So it's okay. We can, we can pound this. Okay. Why does mine look so big? Wonder Twin Powers activate. We almost press. I almost pressed the end record button. Oh, oh, what a day! What is going what on? What a day! It, 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 it's, it's, just, it's great when you. Shit. I've been up for thirteen over thirteen hours, so that's, that's what my really shit is. <laughs> So we're going to oh get into it, but before we do that, I'm going to thank each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for joining us here on the YouTube. Uh, you could, uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Uh, don't forget to sh uh, share us out there, your friends, family, and just weird little people that are prancing along in the streets. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hee 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 hee. <laughs> what kind of people just walk around? Wee, wee, wee. Well, I guess me. I guess me. Yeah, I guess I'm me right. too. I guess. <laughs> and also, don't forget to check, check out our friends Boris and Matt over at Bam Weekly on Facebook as they're 
they're going to be our partners in audio form going forward once they get their new stuff going for all their Japanese wrestling content. So check them over there on Facebook and keep in touch for when we start getting our audio side out there again. But we're going to get into it. We're going to talk some stardom, which we haven't done in a bit. Uh, we're going to talk stardom from Cork, UN, or no, it wasn't. That's the wrong graphic. Or, it was in Tokyo. What the hell? I don't know anymore. Oh, it's in Cork, UN Hall in Tokyo. That makes sense. That makes sense. Cork, UN Hall is in Tokyo. It was very nice to see the entire flow chart of thought that happened there, my friend. Oh, a, my a, a peek, a sneak peek into the inner workings of your brain. I love it. Oh, this is my brain not on drugs, so. <laughs> oh, your brain on drugs is scary. No, it, no, but it, this is my brain not on my regular drugs, like the stuff I took on a normal daily basis that didn't take them today. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> you want to get on that? <laughs> yeah, we kick it off in the three-way match with my custom graphic, Lady C versus Rana Yamagi versus Rian, which was originally supposed to be a tag match with Lady C and Rana teaming up against Rian and uh, Zena originally for this match. But due to scheduling changes and people falling out of the show, Hanako, um, things got moved around. And Han and Zena moved into Hanako's spot, and this became a three-way. Yeah, yeah, but now that we know the reason why Hanako is kind of the MIA, it's okay. We should be okay with this. But, she, but she's not going to USA until August, so... Yeah, but she's got to prepare. She's got, she... Yeah, she should be in the ring wrestling to prepare. I, I'm referring to the language, but okay. Yeah, but she can learn from Mina. Mina speaks She's English. Match, my friend. Mina she speaks does. English. She does. She does. She I didn't say she didn't. Yeah. I'm just uh, saying it might not be the best person to learn English from. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Thecla <laughs> then? To the match. Thecla then. Whatever. Uh, Lady Not C gets Lady C gets a double abdominal stretch, but Orion gets out and gets a rear naked choke on Lady C while she has the abdominal stretch on Orion Yamagi. It was actually a pretty good spot. Uh, yeah. Lady C gets Lady C got a giant swing on Rian, and it, she went for a bit with that giant swing too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was dizzy, fell over the almost fell over the ropes there. She had to hang on for balance. Mm -hmm. uh, Rana <laughs> unloading some solid kicks about Lady C and Rian throughout this match. She she got mm -hmm. them kicks. She belongs in God's eye with those kicks. Uh, head scissors by Rian into a gator roll and gets a fisherman suplex onto Rana Yamagi. Uh, Lady C it does come up with the double clothesline, but Rana stops a choke slam. So Lady C hits, gets her into the corner, hits a hell of halluva kick. Uh, she then gets a halluva kick to Rian in the corner and then hits her with the lariat for the win. Lady C getting the win. Let's go. It's out of Queen's Quest, and that's what happens. Uh oh. Yeah, a couple aesthetic things to point out here, real quick. Rana, a new hairdo, rocking that black under kind of cut. I think it's called a zonal. I'm not entirely sure that's what it was called when I was younger. Anyway, um, yeah, she's got the black underneath her regular gear. Uh, yeah, you have no hair, you wouldn't know. Yeah, it's fair. It's fair. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Lady C rocking a new uh, short, shorter, kind of shoulder length uh, do and still uh, rocking those fun little anime ear headphone things that like what Azumi kind of um, had there. Really, really nice little look. Um, refreshing to see after the, the Queen's Quest kind of dissolution there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that abdominal stretch where Rian kind of escaped and, and jumped onto Lady C's back, that was a really cool little spot because it was like, it was so simple, but done so effortlessly. And especially mm -hmm. by someone who's as new as Rian, um, it was nice to, to see it just flow so quickly and, and and well um yeah rana pulling out those kicks what i really liked about those kicks is that she wasn't just using her dominant um leg in the right leg 
she was using both legs and going back and forth between Lady C and Rianne um, until I think it was Rianne kind of bailed first and Lady C took a couple extra. Um, but yeah, super, super impressive to see, like knowing, even knowing that she has that martial arts background, it's still super impressive to see her hit just as solidly with her non-dominant leg as it is her dominant leg. Um, and then lastly, yeah, there was that fisherman suplex pin that Rian did to, I believe it was Rana. Um, really, really, really well done. Just snapped into it so quickly, so effortlessly. This was a great combination of ladies to have for an opening match. I was really impressed with this. Yeah, I was really impressed, like especially with Rian, where she did in that suplex spot. Um mm -hmm. I really liked it because just just in the technicality of how she did it, like she got the head scissors, and then it's where you get into the suplex position, but, but on the ground, then you roll, then you kind of roll, and then stand up, and then go into the suplex. That's what the gator roll is. You grab them, and you spin them while holding the soup, like the positioning. Mm -hmm. I really like the technicality of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did very very well. Yeah. So we move on to the match I thought somebody was going to get murdered in. Yeah. It is Sayaka Kurara versus, <sighs> versus Tekla. Oh, well, yeah, let's, let's go. I was actually snapping my friend Alyssa throughout this match because I was just like, Tekla is everything. Mm -hmm. Tekla is like my idol. She's everything I want to be. Love her. Take a side to it, my friend. Yeah, so I uh, so I can like fire firing up the crowd and then Tekla just attacks her, it's just beating her up. Crowbar fights back with drop kicks, but just gets booted into the ropes and booted through the floor. It just 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 Tekla just bullying her throughout. Tekla running her into the chairs. Mm -hmm. uh, she gets a kick to the head for two, then into the two hand like Gets the lockjaw on the Bear Baker lockjaw, but uses both hands to like, like, pry on the mouth. It was like, oh, like she's pulling at the bottom jaw, but also pulling at the top jaw. I was like, Ew. do you remember the movie Mirrors with Kiefer Sutherland? Oh, where he pulled his, where they pulled it was the, the girl, it was his sister who like did that in the bathtub or something like that. Ugh. Yeah, that was the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, ooh, yucky. But cool, yeah. but yucky. Yeah, uh, Thecla stepping on her head in the corner. The Rock is distracting the ref. Thecla gets mm -hmm. her belt, starts whipping Sayaka with, with the belt. The ref gets in her face. Thecla ends up pushing the ref out of the way. But Sayaka spears Thecla. Mm -hmm. Thecla fights back, sends Sayaka out to the floor. They're brawling on the floor. Thecla hits a suplex. She goes to get back in the ring, but Thecla's like, stopping her from getting back and pulls her down. Cool, and that's right. Or, uh, sorry, Kurara pulls her down. Mm -hmm. And they both get counted out. So Thakla's not happy about this and whips her with the belt on the floor, chokes her with it after the match. She tosses the ref around. He put, like, puts the belt around his head and like whips him around, whips him around. It was, it was yeah. yeah. I am loving this new attitude from Thakla, though. And like we were seeing the kind of like startings of it in those final months of DDM, um, mm -hmm. where she was starting to kind of break, be blah, 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 figure out your English words, Alyssa. She was really, what's the words? She was turning up her brutalness, but like only kind of a little bit. Like she turned it up to three and then back down to one, and then she turned it up to five and then back down to one. It was very inconsistent. So it was almost kind of coming off as like maybe like an episode or something in the middle of a match or like a response to something that happened in the mm -hmm. match. But now that we've seen her join Oedo Tai and start working with Oedo Tai, maybe this is just a part of what Thecla's always been. And she's been kind of suppressing her her true urges of what she wants to do in professional wrestling and i'm kind of living for it these heel antics just seem so natural to mm -hmm. her like it, it's so 
refreshing because like a weight of tie in itself has already always been a favorite of mine because of their heel tendencies but i almost feel like we're seeing the emergence of a contender a possible contender for that top spot in a weight of tie because as as mean and just brutal and conniving as torah can be that class kind of making a bit of a push right now maybe kind of teasing that so yeah um i don't really have a whole lot to, to add you kind of got all the the big spots that i kind of um wrote down which is good gonna move in along really quickly but yeah i i thought when i saw this announced i was like oh dear we are about to see kurara get her a rah rah a rah rud and she did she she got yeeted around she got beat up like this was almost like her and tora this, from the from the cinderella from the from cinderella yeah with with as as underwhelming as an ending i think because mm. i don't I am I like them when they make sense, the timeouts and like the count outs and stuff like that. This one it, it helps progress Decla's story for sure. I don't know how I don't really feel like it progresses Kuraras, but um I definitely feel like this was some great character development for Decla for sure. I'm very much looking forward to see what she does next because gosh dang, this woman she's She's coming to do some shit. She's coming to wreck some shit. You don't want to get wrecked. Get out of her way. That's true. That is mm -hmm. true. So we're going to move on to the third match of the evening. It was Hina and Saki Kashima taking on Cosmic Angels. Like it's uh, Cosmic Angels, Aya Sakura, and Yuna Mizumori. Uh, Saki mm -hmm. actually starts with Yuna. Actually does start with Yuna. I was surprised that she got in there to begin with. I was like, okay. And she gets mm -hmm. like shoulder block, and then she tries to tag out, but Hina has jumped off the apron, and I'm like, ha ha ha! Hina's already being told stuff by God's eye on what to do when you're tagging with Saki. Right. I love make this. her I stay love. in there. <laughs> yeah, Saki ends up getting sent to the floor. Uh, Aya grab Aya does grab her, and uh, Yuna gets to run around the ring into a shoulder block. Uh, Saki with a big Rana in the ring. Uh, and hits a running boot in the ropes. Yuna's, Yuna's in, hits an Alabama slam into the corner, and Aya follows up with a hip attack for two. Uh, Kura is getting some solid kicks, dropping uh, Hina with them. Uh, she gets a scoop slam for two into the figure four head scissors, but the submission does get broken up. Um, Aya gets a northern light suplex to Hina for a two, then hits a guillotine knee. Off of the second, very uh, Renarita style right there. But Saki, at the end of the match, comes in, hits a super kick, and Hina hits uh, Aya, Sa uh, Aya Sakura with the Fisherman Buster for the win. Mm -hmm. Hmm. This was a fun little tag match. As you mentioned, it was really fun to see um, Saki and Hina kind of work together. I actually found that they were quite cohesive and worked very very well together that being said i don't know that either of them are fit for Gotza anymore i mean i never really fully thought that kashima was but we're getting a lot of factions though maybe they should just stay there <laughs> for their own personal safety especially kashima um yeah the only other thing that i wanted to mention about this one was i really liked how in the cosmic angels um, side of things yuna was really kind of taking the lead kind of directing traffic with aya and um like kind of setting up all their little tag moves and sequences that they were doing um because Aya, i think she she's good and she's like she does have the foundations there and she's coming along very very well but she's not progressing at the same speed as someone like Hanako or Yuzuki did. Hmm. She and um, Kurara, they are progressing along and they're progressing along very, very well under the tutelage of the Cosmic Angels. They're just, they're getting there a little slower. They're having a little more attention. And this match I, and the match before has really shown the positive progress that both these women have made. 
And mm. especially with um, with Aya, having that tutelage of Yuna to kind of point out and direct traffic and have everything just go so smoothly and so effortless was great. It was very nice. Yeah. Again, it, it, it did run smooth. I really did enjoy this match. It was, it was fun. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you can see that building of... of, of of Aya and how she's progressing. And then you got Hina, who I think is doing mm-hmm. some of the best work she's done. And to really, again, really trying to prove herself with with mm-hmm. Queen's Quest falling apart. So I really, I'm really enjoying what she's doing too. I and Kat, agree. She's Kashima. Saki's just there. <laughs> yeah. We move on, fourth match of the evening with my custom graphic. Uh, job, May- good job. May Sarah in a Mio Amasaki taking on Empress or from the new faction, which we haven't got a name for yet, but it seems like these two are part of that new faction. Uh, mm-hmm. Taking on Empress, Nexus, Venus, uh, Wakaskiyama, and Azina. Uh, nice. This was originally supposed to be Waka and Hanako versus May. Mm-hmm. And, but yeah, uh, great back and forth between May and Zena early. I really liked the way they played off each other. Uh, Zena and Waka hit a wheelbarrow leg drop uh, to Mei Mei uh, for two. And Waka hits a bunch of Waka weapons and gets another two. Uh, Mei kneeing Zena in, in the head to stop a suplex, which is great. But she comes down, but then Zena just brings her back up and hits that gosh darn suplex. Those knees to the oh, head are yeet. Oh, yeah. that was a yeet, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, me, me, uh, kicks out the knee, hits pimp juice, and the drop kick to the back for two. Xena, uh, she fights off a double team and gets that double pendulum DDT there. I like, I was like, ooh. Uh, Xena fights back, sending me into the ropes. Waka hits the Waka weapon in the ropes, gets a Waka ride. Well, Xena gets a big boss and crab on May May. Uh, me, gets to the ropes, uh, and then uh, gets a pendulum DDT. To fight back and then tags out to May May. Uh, really good back and forth. May gets walk it down into this like STF position, but was like pulling on the hair. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, different. Uh, Zena gets mm-hmm. the the Mariah May super spinning sidewalk slam uh, to May May, and Waka hits a top rope drop kick for two. Uh, Waka gets a straight jacket slam on May May for two, but then Miu hits a DDT on Zena. Uh, May sends Waka into a pedigree by Miu and then hits her snap sunset flip to pin Waka for the win. Yes. Um, I actually didn't take a whole ton of notes on this one. I just sat and enjoyed this one. Um, but what I did write down was the uh, Yina, Yina, Zina. Yina. Why did I do... Why did I do the Mexican pronunciation? Zina. Zina. Um, Zina, yeeting people around is just always impressive. I love it. And I do love the the shorter do that she's kind of been rocking. Um, waka. Waka and her Waka weapons is just, it brings me joy to see. It's like watching Hamna. It, it's so much joy. But then the walk of ride when um, Zena got that Boston Crab in was really, really great. Especially because, like, the the ref, like, I don't know if it ref actually knocked them over or if they just lost their balance. But, I think like, they lost the balance. Okay. Because the ref was right next to them, yelling at them to, to break the hold anyway. But, um, yeah. It just, from the angle that it looked, it looked like the ref had pushed them, and I kind of giggled at it because they just kind of fell and rolled out the ring. <laughs> Poor Waka sitting there like, what's going on? I loved it. She's, um, just, she's just riding Mia like, what's happening? Pretty much. Like, she could she could hear something kind of happening, but it was just far back <laughs> enough she couldn't really yeah. turn around to see without messing up the move. Um, I, just, I felt it was an interesting ending to this because like there were there's a few things kind of going on in this that one pretty obvious and one that i think needs to be a little bit more addressed which is um so the one thing that it, i'm noticing is that obviously with this new team formation with me sarah miyu azumi starlight kid suzu suzuki and that's it right lady c wasn't included in that no lady c is 
kind of being looked at by God's eye. Right, right, right. Okay. So the the new faction that has yet to be named that we are aware of at this time, um, they need to start, you know, getting some credibility. They need to start kind of showing why they deserve to be a team. So the win here is very good for them and actually helps build up for their team, which I love. But something that I feel that you and you and I both might echo on this this sentiment is that Empress Nexus Venus has kind of been around for a little little bit, a little bit, like half a year now, right? Like they formed kind of the end of January ish, right? End of January, so the the January, right around there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they've been going for about like what we're gonna say, like a strong six months. Mm -hmm. You have such an incredible team with the world champion Micah with the artists of stardom champions in Xena Micah and Mina Shirakawa. Then you have that incredible rookie in in Hanako and Waka. And Waka is so passionate and so good at what she does. Why are we still getting this kind of underwhelmingness coming from the Empress Nexus Venus faction when it's not I don't want to say important, but like, why is the build not happening? Hold on, let me finish the thought. <laughs> like, why is the build not happening so much with the, we'll say the undergirls of Empress Nexus Venus? And why are we seeing other people kind of getting a push? What's, what's your answer, Andre? Uh, she was a Rossi Ogawa project. Uh, Rossi was building her up through all that, having her lose, and then eventually got that win against Nane. But then right after he, she beat Nane was when Rossi lost his power in the company, and then you saw Waka just getting pinned down at almost every show since then. And, yeah. Mm, yeah, the new bookers aren't going with her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's why Okada of the non Kazuchika kind, sir. We need to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. We do. Uh, oh, de -de 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 dear. Starting to feel like Waka should have maybe left with uh, Julia. You, you, you would think so in a way. I mean, I'm honestly knowing that. Like, I didn't know that. I didn't realize that. So, if well, that is the actual case, why, why didn't he take her with him? Especially knowing that she's gonna just get run down like this. It's disappointing. Yeah, I'm not sure on this one, but yeah. Again, I'm not sure, but this the timing makes sense because Rossi mm -hmm. would have lost his power right around that time, just around. The time she beat Nani, and I felt like there was going to be a big push for her. And then that's where mm -hmm. you, Mina's kind of push. Mina and Mariah did end up winning the tag titles just after that, but then they got lost them pretty quick. And it felt like mm -hmm. almost like they kind of pushed those them they called Venus to the back at that point. So they did, yeah. Which is like again supremely disappointing, especially considering what they've been doing with Mina since. Mm-hmm. Kata of the non Kazutka kind. Maybe Let we need an Okada of the Kazuchka kind to come and book this promotion. Uh, he would probably do better. Oh, yeah. 100% he would. I would trust the guy who is now making more money and noise in the professional wrestling business just saying the word bitch over the guy who can't fist properly. Uh, uh, if you want context to that, go back and watch Japanese Wrestling Update from, I think Last it week. was the 5th. Yeah, from the 5th. Yeah. You yeah. want context to why he can't fist. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's nothing sexual, I swear. It really isn't, which is funny considering it's me. <laughs> We move on. Six women tag. It's Oedo ties Fuki can death. Natsuki Tora and Rina versus stars Hazuki Koguma and Momo Koko. Glad to see mm -hmm. Mom more Momo Koko <laughs> on these shows. Um, Hazuki, it's her, it's her tenth year and it's her tenth anniversary, and she gets a sign given to her by yeah. a fan in the crowd. Um, Oedo tie attacking before the bell. Uh, but Hazuki fights back. Matora gets her in the ropes, hits a face, and hits hits. 
Hazuki's face wash and running boot to Hazuki. And I was just like, whoa. The audacity. Yeah, Hazuki does get yanked out and sent to the chairs. Back in the ring, Koguma eventually gets in the match. Um, he drops a double team from Tor and Rina and hits a double corner splash to them and then gets them stacked and gets on their back and hits the little stomps into the big stomp. Uh, later in the match, Hazuki's in with Fuki and Death. Uh, she gets Fuki in the ropes and she finally gets her face wash and running boot for two. Tora attacks uh, Hazuki with the kamikaze uh, <laughs> of the bolt and Oleg kind. And uh, Fuki comes off the second rope with a sent on for two. Uh, Fuki with the eye poke, but Hazuki dodges the pape, the shot of the uh, sure, trying to hit her with the paper uh, and sends Fuki into a into a Momo Kogo 619 and Hazuki hits an MX for two, then applies a crossface, but it's broken up. Uh, the end of the match comes. Hazuki and Kogoma hit the hit the razor's edge cutter for two. Uh, and Hazuki goes to the top, hits the Senton off the top for the win. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting way to have this match in particular. Kind of go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't. I, again, I didn't take a whole ton of notes on this one just because I enjoyed the match. I enjoyed um, watching Hazuki. Wow, she. So it was an interesting story they kind of told in this one, where they kind of had her looking a little weak at the beginning. They're getting beaten up pretty badly, and having her have this triumphant kind of fire back in the later part of the match. This is why I love. Hazuki, because she does kind of, it is a template of hers, but it's not a boring one by any means, where she will start to to have the like, that weak start where it looks like she's maybe not ready for the match, but then she comes back just, just a going. Um, Kuki can uh, make up again, never moving, always impressive with that. Um, and I also just got, if, if you haven't seen Natsuko Tora's entrance gear, highly recommend you go check it out. She looks like a cross between Super Shredder and a dragon from House of Dragons or something. Like, she just looks with, with, so freaking bad ass. With Minotaur horns. Well, that's why I said the dragon, because it, it's actually like a little dragon skull mask oh, thing that's on the front there. That's just covered in like some chrome looking stuff. It's really, really cool. I mean, she fits that heel picturesque thing perfectly. And then the team, just how they function so well. This is what House of Torture could be if they weren't doing a bullshit. Um, I also I echo the sentiment of Momokogo. We need to see more Momokogo because she's been such a joy and treat to see back. We mm. missed her since she was off filming her little action movie um yeah i don't have a whole lot to add other so azuki did get the mic after and this is a direct japanese translation that i pull off the website we've won our first match of the 10th anniversary with this momentum i want to wear that white belt this year for sure hazuki's dream is also a hazura dream so I will make sure it comes true, and then let's continue dreaming together of the dream beyond that. Thank you. Well, the wording is very weird, but again, that's direct Japanese translation to English. So it definitely sounds like a look to the future kind of speech, mm. and I love that. I love that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't have anything to add to that. I'm excited to see where where it is Hizuki goes from here. After 10 years in this business, I'm surprised she hasn't gone after the wonder of stardom title. But she does have these little, as I mentioned before, these little <clears throat> phases that she likes to go through where she focuses on single stuff and then focuses on tags. But focuses on singles, then focuses on tag. Uh, for the last little while, um, we saw a little spoof of it last year where she went after the uh, high-speed title there for a little bit. But now she was kind of back in the tag kind of thing with Kaguma and kind of doing that. Now I think she's kind of going for the uh, 
that singles kind of thing again and i am here for it let's go yeah again I, i'm go. i'm very excited go back to your old music please I think she needs even newer music. Is what she needs to give with with even... a remix of her, no, her no. older stuff. Like just go exact opposite, slow in like myth, like a na, 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 na. just go even farther away from her own music. You're horrible, horrible, horrible person. Take us to the next one. <laughs> We go into what was easily Mel's least favorite match of the night. It was Cosmic Angels, Natsu Boy, Sayoriyadu, and Tam Nakano versus God's Eyes, Ami Sarei, Konami, and Siri. I know Mel just hated this. So I'm just going to skip this and just give you the ending because Mel doesn't even want to talk about this match. I'm kidding. What the flying fruitcake of a fa la la and powdered sugar on Santa's asshole are you smoking over there? Oh, Mel, Mel just hates Konami and Siri. She thinks they're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, dick. I joke. I joke. Uh, okay. Early on, Ami's overpowering Nat and beating her up, then drapes her across the the corner and hits that splash to the midsection while she's across the corner. Konami comes in just with a vicious PK to Nat, then Siri in with even more brutal hard kicks to Nat. Uh, Tim and Nat try to double team Konami, but Ami makes the save. Uh, sends uh, and then. She ends up sending them both over, both into the ropes, where Siri and Konami gets Minara Suzuki style arm bars over the ropes. Uh, Konami yeah. gets in the ring, gets another arm bar into the disarmer, but Tam does get to the ropes. Um, Ami and sorry, or just trading shots. They're just so winging at each other. They look great. It looked great. Uh, Ami does get the high angle crab on her. Into the single leg crab, but Anu gets to the ropes. Mm-hmm. And Nat gets an octopus on Ami. And Siri tries to make the save, but, um, uh, sorry, uh, but sorry, it, but Siri tries to make a save and Tam stops her from breaking up. Ami fights her way to the ropes. Siri comes in, hits a code breaker, and Konami hits Nat with a hard kick. And then Ami gets that stalling suplex for two. Uh, Nat misses off the top. Ami hits a sliding Larry for two. She gets her up into a torture rack, but then Natsu Boy just flips out of it into an arm bar, which looked incredible. It gets mm-hmm. broken up. Everybody's brawling. Cosmic Angels hits the triple German move, but then God's Eye comes back with the triple head kicks. Everybody's down. Ami gets a blue thunder bomb to uh, goes for gets a blue thunder bomb onto Nat. Uh, but then Nat, but Nat rolls her up for two. So Ami comes back with that big old lariat, and she gets two. She gets uh, Natsupoi up, goes for like a thunderbolt, but she, but Natsupoi reverses and rolls her into the victory roll for the one, the two, and Natsupoi gets the three for the win. And I really didn't expect this. I didn't die either. I didn't. I, I honestly expected that uh, Poi would be actually the one mm-hmm. um, taking the okay. loss on this one. Um, I don't have a whole ton to add. Um, but the only move that I mentioned was the high angle crab by Ami because she just does them so picture perfectly. Um, more of an observation. Um, I've noticed that, you know, since winning the Goddess of Stardom titles, Konami and Suri kind of taken a, a little bit of a darker kind of path, walking the path of the dark side, I think. And I felt that this match showed that evolution even more. Um, we see Konami has always just been a presence in herself, but like she's giving me almost like her Oedo Tai esque kind of vibes just without the maniacalness because when she was in Oedo Tai she was kind of like doing the evil smile smirk a lot whereas like right now like despite the what the picture would show you she's not a, a smiley happy camper even though she's the goddess of stardom champion her and Suri have this like sense of impending doom kind of following them around and the doom being them because they kick the crap out of you mm-hmm. 
Ami kind of feeling a bit like a odd man out with this kind of little darkness that's kind of been following around the the gods i i would say the elite because they're certainly i would say the two most dangerous women in this company um aside from maybe momo and tora um so yeah it, it was a very interesting dynamic they're still working together so fluidly and so well but like we're starting to see a lot more heelish tendencies coming out of Suri and Konami where they're like we wouldn't see we'd see Suri come in there to break up pins but not nearly as much as we are now we've seen her come in to break up submissions before but not nearly as much as we are and now she's becoming a little bit more savage and I love it because as much as I love the matronly side of Shuri, I love how she kind of flies wildly between personalities of being that kind of caring, gentle captain mentor kind of character and that relentless, hard ass, scary mamma jamma like Konami. So it's very interesting to see the, the kind of change kind of happening in there. And then Cosmic Angels, like before we saw this kind of the three combination of these three working very interestingly where Poi and Tam were just like la 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 and Anu is kind of lumbering in the back like what the fizzity busy are these two girls doing and now we're seeing a lot more cohesiveness between the three of them where Poi and, and Tam are la 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 and Anu is kind of sitting there like uh-huh yeah 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 la 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 she's not quite that adorable aloof level that Poi and Tam are but she's certainly getting there and the more she kind of steps out of that kind of monotoned kind of what she used to be that we didn't like the more I love her like every time I see Sirianu I think I love her more and more and more that's all I got for this guy yeah uh and yeah it just post-match though uh, Ami mm. get, turns Natsupoi and Sirianu around, Sirianu around and just double chops both of them in the back. And then you see Tam in the background go up to Suri who's kneeling and like and get puts her back to Suri and Suri double chops her in the back. Then she runs around behind Suri and double chops Suri in the back. It's just stupid. Yeah, it was. I didn't get that either. Kind of like for me, as all the seriousness that I was talking about, kind of like got went out the window at that point. But yeah. like Konami didn't just, just say him. Yeah, <laughs> Don't think was, they would was, like to test that water. It was stupid but funny. Yeah, it was amusing. Amusing little spot. Yeah. Uh we move on to the semi-main event. It's a tag team match. It's Azumi and Star Light Kid versus Oedo Ties, Mama Watanabe and Ruaka. Ruaka! <laughs> Uh, Azubi and Starlight Kid, they're little when they get in the ring and then they start running the ropes and then hit the ropes and roll into their poses. I love that. I love their little stuff yeah. together. Yeah. 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 It has that little kind of je ne sais quoi thing that sets them apart from every other team. And, and considering they're forming their own faction, they have to do something that's going to be fun, unique. It's going to get the crowd going. Ooh. I think that's a good way to start it for sure. Yeah. So Oedo Tai dodges uh, a, a Starlight Kid and Azumi, and uh, they hit them with PK, sending them out to the floor. But as Oedo Tai climbs out to the floor, uh, Starlight Kid and Azumi rush back in, and then they hit uh, low pace to uh, the ladies on the floor. Oedo Tai fights back. They end up running him into the chair, beat him up, beating him up on the floor. Um, Bobo's in with Starlight Kid, just beating her down. Starlight Kid goes up to springboard off the middle rope, and Momo just grabs her by the mass and just slams her down into the mat. It would look brutal. So brutal. Yeah, oh. so brutal. So brutal. And she's just unloading kicks and stomps. Uh, mm -hmm. So that kid does fight back at one point. Uh, Azumi gets in. She's Her and Momo start trading snapmares into PKs back and forth. It was so good. Mm hmm Oh, I loved it. I love that spot. Uh, Rock comes in. She gets... Uh, Azumi against the bottom rope and hits a running cross body against the bottom rope. Uh, Azumi reverses the suplex into an arm bar, then turns it into the double arm bar. But as she gets the, the arm, both arm bars locked in her legs, um, 
Raka does get to the ropes. Um, yeah, just good spots there. Uh, Starlight Kid later in the match goes to the top, misses the twisting frog splash. Uh, and Momo kicks her in the head, and Ruaka hits the Fisherman Buster for two. Uh, Momo hits Starlight Kid in the back with the bat as Ruaka has her up in the air and then picks her up, hits a Dude Buster, and then Ruaka hits the Vader Bomb out of the corner for two. Ruaka goes up for the Freezer Bomb, but Azumi jumps up to the top rope, arm drags her off the top, uh, she ends up kicking Momo, but uh, uh, in, but Momo kicks her back and kicks her in the head. A uh, Starlight Kid hits a shotgun drop kick to the back, sending Rocket into the corner. Then hits her with slice bread number two or Shinrai, uh, but she only gets two. Azumi comes comes in, hits La Mystica to Ruaka, and Starlight Kid finishes it off with the top rope moonsault for the win. Yes, 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 yes. This was an interesting match for me because I felt that it was a little imbalanced, we'll say, because I consider both Momo and Ruaka to be, I don't want to say heavyweights, but that would be the appropriate kind of, I think, terminology for it. And I consider Azumi and Starlight Kids both juniors in comparison. So this one was a very, like, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, maybe we're going to see a bit of a loss on their side. Not the case. Very pleasantly surprised about that. Um, the only thing I wanted to add, uh, you mentioned the fisherman hook suplex. Mm -hmm. I really liked how Starlight Kid does that. She's just mm. so crisp and so good with that. It was almost like um, as good as Yujiro's. Yujiro Takahashi, he does those very, very well. Mm. I know you don't like that, but um, yeah, this was a very fun match, though. I mean, Starlight Kid and Azumi, they're just, when they pick up that speed just that little bit, Mimomo and Ruaka have no problem keeping up with them. They, they, these four women had such a great flow together. And I mean, obviously, Starlight Kid, a member of Oedo Tai for some time, worked with both Momo and Ruaka. You know, the, I didn't expect anything other than greatness out of this match, and we got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, a, a really fun match. And then post match, uh, they get on the mic. Uh, kid says, uh, Mei Chan, Miu, thank you for helping me. Miu Amasaki gets the uh, mic. She says, You mentioned the singles match the other day. How about Osaka on July 12th? Uh, kid says, Osaka, let's do it quickly. Let's communicate our feelings and confirm each other's feelings. Uh, will everyone at one accord can come to Osaka to watch? Of course they will. It may take some time, and nothing has been decided yet as a unit, but I will definitely create the right answer here for the path that I decide on after two months of hard work. So please look forward to it. Yes, I'm excited. I'm excited. Lots of changes happening in the stardom landscape right now. I'm very excited to see what's happening. But man, oh man, Okada of the non kazushka kind, please make sure you refer to Gato for help. Yeah, except don't let him book uh, Way to Tie. Uh, or, well, I, that's I, the I, one that is the one good thing Okada of the non Kazuchiko kind has done is the way they book the let a widow tie do, yeah, the widow tie things. Uh, yeah, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. There's just some other questionable things, it's true. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move on. Main event of the evening. It is our favorite faction, Empress Nexus Venus, Micah, and Mina Shirakawa, teaming up with Queen's Quest, Saya Kamatani, taking mm -hmm. on stars Hanan, Mayo Otani, and Saya Ida. So match with two Sayas. Yay. I, have to write, I actually have to write out Kamatani instead of just writing Saya every time. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> I could write Saya or mess up who I was talking about. Great yeah, back. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, great back forth with Micah and Mayu early on. Um, then Ida mm -hmm. comes in and Micah just overpowers Ida, which was like, ooh. Stars end up triple teaming her, but miss the triple dropkick. Mina and Kamatani send Mayu and Hanan out of the ring. And they triple team Ida. And then Mina and Micah hit the sidewalk slam neck breaker combo. 
Uh, Kamatani actually gets a laying sharpshooter uh, at one to yeah, at one point in the match. Mm-hmm. Mina gets the Romero special surfboard and then rolls it back and like jumps up and stomps the knees of Ida. Yeah, that was savage. I loved that combination, though, because it's super smart because you've already messed up the person's knees by trying to put them up there, like up in the put the feet up in the air, put the feet up in the air. Uh, It's true. Everyone's feet are in the air at that point. But um, to add that little like F you stomp with the knees at the end of it is just it. I now have to it's a 50, 50 20 about uh, Mel's new Mel's new hit. Put your feet up in the put air. Put your feet up in the air. <laughs> put it to put it to uh, some suggestive looking videos and yeah. Oh, we can remix it with your sword hammer. I know I don't want to have any 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 of my audio in there. <laughs> Uh, so hard hammer, put your feet up in the air, put your feet up in the air. So hard hammer. <laughs> Continue, sorry. Uh, Ida gets the speed chops to Micah, but she fights back. But then Hanan comes in, they both hit that leaping double chop to Micah together. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, Mayu ends up hitting Ed scissors to Micah, sending her in the ropes, and then hits the double arm drags to Mina and Kamatani, sending them into the ropes, and Stars hit the triple drop kick in the ropes. Uh, Mina and Mayu are in. They trade shots, and they're trade, and they're going back and forth, dodging each other's shots. Mayu gets a super kick. Mina hits a rolling elbow. Mayu hits a German. Mina hits a backdrop, and then they kick each other in the head, and they both off to that mad great i love the sequence there it just went it Mm -hmm. runs smoothly too yeah yeah they they uh, they flowed so effortlessly together i absolutely love that exchange yeah um so yeah they they eventually stars end up sending uh mike uh and kamatani to the floor and then uh hanan and uh ida hit uh Dual high crosses off the second turnbuckle to the them on the floor. Stars gets a trip team wheelbarrow face buster in the ring. Hanan gets a northern light suplex, but it gets broken up. Micah gets a sliding lariat. She gets a mean up on her shoulders, hits that electric chair slam, uh, then hits uh, and uh, to Hanan. Um, and Kamatani comes in with a springboard cross for two. Chaos erupts. Everybody's in the ring, in and out, just hitting each other with moves. Hanan ends up hitting a rough rider for one on Kamatani. Then Kamatani with that pump kick, where she only gets one. Uh, Mayu comes in at the, to, at the end of this match. It's a sling blade. Hanan gets a crucifix pin, but it gets broken up. EXV and Kamatani take out the remaining members of Stars. Uh, and Mina and Kamatani hit a round, dual roundhouse kicks, a dual roundhouse kick, spinning elbow into the head. Of I it was Hana, I think no, no, it was it Hana. Yeah, to Hanan. And Micah hits this brutal looking lariat. Kamatani then picks her up. Star Crusher for the win. Yes, yes. There was there was so much going on in this match. I absolutely loved it. And an interesting, um interesting main event, all champions. All champions in the main event here. So, yeah. like, lots to, to be said, you know, who wins and, and who takes the loss. Um, but, wow, was that a victory for Kamatani and a positive one, given that she is the kind of solo remaining member of Queen's Quest. It'll be interesting to see if she continues to fly the queen's quest flag or if she'll choose to retire it and um and and maybe join she she certainly teamed very very well with mina shirakawa and micah and they seemed to i've been don't know if you've been following their social medias but they're posting a lot of post pictures with with kamatani you know they, they seem to take a liking to her so will we see her kind of put the flag down and, and join up somebody else or will we see her kind of rebuild queen's quest kind of from the ground up 
I guess we'll just have to wait and see what she chooses to do with that. Do I have anything else to add? Or, or, or do we get an amalgamation and it becomes Emp Empress Queen Venus? We've already got the amalgamation of Empress and Club Venus. Like, that's just gonna... That's like some Hontai chaos mixery going on there. You're not an alchemist, sir. That's Max Matt Vandergriff. Well, I'll get him to do it then. I don't... I mean, Hanako's going to be there with him, maybe. You know, maybe not. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. The only thing I wanted to add is Ida. I don't know if she's getting ready for competition or something, but she is looking especially jacked and especially tanned. Like, mm -hmm. and she's posing so nice. She's posing more. I don't know if it's just that she's bigger or what, but like she's put on some size and gotten some definition. Looking great. Absolutely mm -hmm. love her. And I love how high she throws her, her little sweater when she does her intro. I'm just waiting for it to fall on her head one day. Or like land on somebody else's head or something. Or yeah. the ref, the announcer. One of her on teammates. Her, I would love it for it to like it's her and Hanan in one of their new blood matches. She throws it up and then it lands on Hanan's head. I would love that. That would be phenomenal. We've seen it get stuck in the rafters. Yes, the fact that she can throw that high it will depend. Some of those roofs are not super high either, but yeah, she has that power to throw it up there. She does, she does, and she almost threw it to the roof here. The ceiling uh, there, pretty, pretty high. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, this was phenomenal. This was a phenomenal yeah. match. Really feel good match and a really great way to end the show. Yeah. And then uh, we did get post match on this one. Uh, Kamatani gets Mike says, A lot has happened in the two weeks since the Yo Yogi tournament, but I will continue to stand at the top of stardom as Queen's Quest. Right now, I'm taking part in a league called Catch the Wave from uh, Pro Wrestling Wave, uh, and I've been selected to advance to the final tournament along with uh, Rana Yamagi from Gazai, who is a young block finalist. Um, have you bought all? Uh, have you all bought your tickets for Wave on the 14th? I'm taking. I'm taking on the hopes of. Uh, I'm taking on the hopes of stardom. So I'll be carrying the enthusiasm of all of you as well, and I'll definitely come back here as a winner. Mike then gets the mic and says, Kamatani, I believe you will definitely win, and I will also be fighting for this red belt on July 15th at Corkin Hall at Just Tap Out. Yeah. Of course, I will definitely defend this red belt, and I will raise my stardom higher and higher. So Mina gets the mic and says, Tickets are now on sale for July 14th at Wave and July 15th at JTO. And she goes, and there is no announcement for me for Mina Shirakawa. Well, 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 there will be surprises, so please look forward to them. And one of the surprises was it was announced just after this that she is facing the current Wonder of Stardom champion at Sendai Girls on uh, July 20th. So, yeah, live on Wrestle Universe. Go check that out. Yes, yes, yes. Yay. So, and then she continues. So since we have we have come all the way here today, we want to close with a slightly special version for the three of us. Kamatani has been practicing something, saying that she wants to do this if we win. At the end, Kamatani will probably say something like "E Nexus V R." So uh, can everyone please say "here"? Or it's H E E R in the translation. Um, uh, everybody, take close, take a close attention, please. Bow down to that Venus. The Empress and the Queen. Micah says, go beyond your imagination and into the world. And Kamatansi says, Queen's Quest and E Nexus VR. Or E Nexus VAR. That's V-A-R in the translation. And everyone in the crowd goes, here, H-E-E-R. So. Yay. Yeah. So cute. So cute. And I love these little closeouts here. I wish more places did them. They kind of like make the show kind of feel like it came to a conclusion instead of just the match ending being the abrupt conclusion. That's something yeah. that, you know, despite sometimes we complain about. I do like that, like locally, LPW does that. And also Top Talent does that, where they, they have those little thanks for coming. See you next time. Don't forget tickets for the next show. Check out our socials, blah, blah, blah. 
Like, it's not the same thing as this where they're talking directly to the crowd and just having, like, a nice little intimate moment. But it's still something that, again, makes the the show not feel so abrupt. Well, uh, Mustafa Ali had that really great moment at the end of, at the end of the show a, a couple of months ago when he had Talk the kid. Challenge, yeah. And, and he had the kid come in. And he was saying how like mm-hmm. this kid was of his of his culture and says he he was like and the kid said you're you're something I, somebody I look up to and it, and it was mm-hmm. beautiful moments to see something like and even yeah. before he had gotten the kid involved he had a great thank you to the to the city and saying he wants to come back mm-hmm. and that, 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 that sign off so yeah yeah we've seen it with Effie there too Penta like i like that i like those little moments because again it doesn't make everything feel so abrupt it kind of gives everything a nice closure I like it i do too i mm. do too I but, as well. but we have come to the end of another episode of start on review we're gonna be back with more of these and we got so many coming in august and so scared for august oh I'm yeah scared of august. Uh, we're going to be going back to the. We're going to the our tournament way of doing. We're each picking a match from the night, and we'll give you results from the other results of the other match. But we're not going through every match on every one of the shows. There's going to be a lot of shows, so they will be a good bit shorter because we're each going to give you one match from the night, and then uh, just give you results and little tidbits about the other matches. So be prepared for that. When we do when we do G one, it's going to be that way. When we do um, when we do that, and then. And, and then N1 Victory, which I'm really getting interested in. The no- Noah's G1 starts in August. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which has Rio Oiwa. And then just announced Josh Briggs is coming over from NXT to do the N1 Victory this summer, along with another dude from NXT that I'm not as familiar with. So I'm like, dang, like, WWE is putting some people over there. They're really trying to... Yes, it's their younger people from NXT, but give them exposure. Let Josh break this dude. Is man is going to come back to NXT with with some crazy better experience from working this N one victory tournament. So, mm-hmm. yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. It's interesting to see all these crossovers happening because, yep. like, you got that with with Noah. We got Kanosuke Takeshka in the G one yep. from AEW and sort of DDT, I guess. Mm-hmm. He's also yeah, he's DDT associated too. Yeah, yeah. So, like, we see all these kind of associations. We had EO Sky and Mari Gold. We have um, Amina Shirakawa showing up in AEW. We've got, like, all kinds of nice little crossovers happening. That is just really, really exciting. Styles at Noah this this weekend. Styles Uh, at Noah. Jordan Jordan Grace. At Sendai Girls, yeah. Yeah, against Chihiro Hashimoto. Holy frackety frookin. It's going to be great. Singles match on Monday. I know. Ah, so good. Oh, I'm so excited. Ah, me too. So I want to get off of here so I can go watch the Mari Gold show from this morning. because I Or technically last night slash this morning. Because I haven't gotten a chance to set to work all day and then I do stuff this afternoon. So I'm going to go and watch that right after this. So, Which we will still have a show coming out to you at some point this week covering that. Mm-hmm. We'll have a show covering some more stardom this, from this past weekend. We'll have some we'll have some shows. I, I do want to try to do a match or a bit of a review. Probably it'll be on Japanese wrestling update when we can finally see AJ Styles versus Naramichi Mayor Fuji. I do want to talk about that somewhere. We'll probably do it on Japanese wrestling update because we got to talk about that. That's, that's pretty huge. So I love how we're listening to your thought process, just live happening. Oh, do. <laughs> having uh, this heard- conversation after. Verbal diarrhea is what it is. <laughs> Verbal diarrhea. So we got lots of content. yapper over there. <laughs> Plus, Fantastic Mania is tonight. Uh, the yeah. in, in the USA. So we got that coming at you this week. So lots of content to come to you this week. So uh, please stay tuned to the channel. We got lots coming at you. You can find me on the X at that Canada guy, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at that Canada dude, Facebook. You can find me at Andre Melba wrestling talk and our YouTube page, uh, Andre Melba wrestling talk in the comment section. You can also find me chatting away over on the BAM weekly Facebook page, which I'm, I've been trying to be more active over there since I've been restarted. So you can find me, you can chat with me in that page where I'm talking with other wrestling fans about all the goings on in professional wrestling. Uh, you can also find us over at, 
on our local establishment, we just hit the Japanese wrestling update this past Friday. You can check us out there every Friday, either live or recorded. It all depends on the week. Uh, you can also find me there uh, June 20 or July 24. Man, see, I screwed it up already. July 24th. We, it. <laughs> we did. July 24th. You can find me coming back there with my boy, Old Ed, for the Marvel Talk MCU Rebound as we talk Ant Man. Uh, the first Ant-Man movie on the rebound. Uh, then actually go check out over on the OLE YouTube page. Me and Ed just did a trailer reaction uh, for Captain America Brave New World teaser trailer that just dropped. Uh, I was my first Mel, or not Mel, uh, Ed had seen it like four or five times already. I had yet to see it. So it was purely my reaction. I literally got goosebumps watching it. And I literally put I put it up on screen showing my goosebumps because I got goosebumps because certain things that happened. I was like, oh, my God, it got me so excited. That movie looks like mm -hmm. so much fun. That's coming in February next year. And then that following weekend of the 24th, either on the 27th or the 28th, myself, Old Ed, and a couple special guests will be reviewing Deadpool and Wolverine. I cannot wait to talk about that. <laughs> So, oh, yeah. you guys are gonna have fun with that one. Yeah, one more shout out to our boy Mike the Ref over at Backbreaker Video. This guy right there, that one right there, Mike the Ref. Thank you very so much for simulcasting all of our shows. Uh, if you if you want to check out more content from him, go to youtube.com slash at backbreaker video. And if you are watching us over there, please go over and give us a subscribe at Andre and Babel Wrestling Talk on YouTube. If you want to see Mike's live content, go to twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref, where he sees EW watch alongs every Wednesday, Saturday, and pay-per-view Sunday. You can also find him every almost every other day of the week playing video games and just chatting it up in the chats in on his Twitch page, twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref. And you can find all the replays of his game content, youtube.com slash at backbreaker underscore game where you can find content from him Mr. PJC, Mr. Rick Jules, and that frequent guest Kayla J Kayla J Kayla J Kayla J We love Kayla J here We do mm -hmm. It's true, it's true. Melba, where can they find you? If you're wanting to follow a Melba you can follow her on the Axe thing at Collins Melba you can follow her on everything else Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Melba Collins. You can also find her as Andre mentioned on our local establishment programming Japanese Wrestling Update with this guy every Friday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time unless it's not and then we will let you know on social media. This week coming up it is probably going to have to be pre-recorded because we are going to be checking out rcw this hungarian show hungarian, hungarian revolution yes yes where we finally see that showdown show show out show thing we're going to see a fight between <laughs> son of irish cody mack that title i believe interesting interesting I to see what happens I look forward to that. That's a main match I've been wanting to see for a while now. Uh huh. They've been setting it up, sort of. Um, we've been seeing a distinct lack of story building, but <laughs> oh, I love it. Hopefully, oh, hopefully I the Cody's that. can. Uh, sorry, that's just hilarious. <laughs> oh, like... what's hilarious? Well, just, what are we? What are we... Just the way you're describing it. Well, I mean, it's the only story that this company has going for it. And where the flying fizzy fruitcake falala is it? Where are these boys talking? Where's Parrish? Uh, Where's everybody? What are you guys doing? Uh, Freaking beat each other up already. Oh, and on that show, we're also getting the barricade uh, against Azrael on that show. So the battle oh, that's of the big be, yeah. Two Battle of the big, big Boys. Two big men just smashing into each other. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So that's why Japanese Wrestling Update, back to the original topic, that I actually remembered, hey, my ADHD didn't fail me. Um, the Japanese Wrestling Update will be pre-recorded as a result of us attending said RCW show. What's next? If you can also find me on Astro Pizarro's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We just dropped an episode on Thursday talking about Forbidden Door and the exit and entry of Stephanie Vaquier from CMLL into WWE. 
E. So go check that out on Astro Pizarro's YouTube channel. If you're wanting to watch Stardom Wrestling, we will leave a link in the description box below, and Andre will pay attention to get me my ticker. <laughs> it is stardom-world.com. Stop that. <laughs> I don't remember what the Japanese yen cost is, but it works out to approximately 10 Canadian Shadow Sean Spears. It's not actually 10 Canadian, it's more like 4. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, I'm not going to complain about that view either. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy on my soul. Uh, it, it actually works out to, I think it's 14 50 no wait sorry it is not it is less it is actually 750 canadian i mm, so mad how, does, be, how are you left getting it ended anger Andre. left ended anger it's it well i think i don't know i don't ask world, questions where, new japan world has gone up in price it's like uh, it's like 1200 and some yen so or 1300 yen so i think that's why i'm paying like 1450 but i'm still like uh, yeah, sorry, man. I mean, that's what I was charged for the last time. So it's what it is. Got a good price for it. Great price to watch some amazing women's professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. We'll leave the link for you in the description box below. Andre, much much a friend and colleague. Do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? Nope. <laughs> Yes, I do. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us here. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. We want to hear from you. We love talking to you. We love hearing your opinions on all the professional wrestling that we review. Please share us out to your friends, family, and just crazy, crazy people that you know in your life. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello. <laughs> Oh, and that being said, I am your mobile. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Mwah.